Well, critical to the success of this new administration's economic policies is national security, as the Tinubu presidency is coming at a time Nigeria is faced with multiple internal security challenges. This banditry in the northwest, pockets of insurgents in the northeast, headers from as crisis in north central, and gang and court violence in southwest part of Nigeria. Talk about uh, militancy, piracy, and oil theft in the south south and separatist violence in the southeast region. Add to all of that widespread kidnapping for ransom across the country. In his renewed hope manifesto, President Tinubu did promise to redefine the military doctrine and practice, as well as mobilize the totality of our national security, military and law enforcement assets to protect all Nigerians from danger and from the fear of danger. Let's talk about um, national security under the Tinubu administration and what is expected in his first 100 days in office. Joining me live from our Abuja studio is the former spokesperson of the Nigerian Army with more than three decades of service in the military, former director, Army Public Relations, Brigadier General Sunny Usman. Thank you for joining us on the program. Good evening and thank you for having me on your program. All right, let's begin with some of the challenges right now and how... Uh, the new administration should begin to deal with them. Uh, we're looking at um, 650 million naira reportedly paid for ransom within uh, between 2021 and 2022. At least 500 people were kidnapped within that period. No fewer than 3,400 people abducted across the country. What would you say has made this particular challenge endemic? That naturally, um, it is very, very challenging in the sense that it has uh, been affecting, you know, the, the safety and security of uh, Nigerians. Therefore, anything that will impinge on your freedom, regardless of which type of freedom, I think is a very challenging thing. More so, uh, when you talk about kidnapping, banditry, and other security challenges, uh, particularly kidnapping, in the sense that uh, the value of human dignity has been reduced to that of an animal. People are paying ransom, you know, simply because um, he has been kidnapped and all the rest. So these, and it has a corresponding effect, negatively, so to speak, on um, socio-economic well-being of the Nigerian society. It has affected the educational system. It has affected food security, and so on and so many things. Therefore. Uh, there is high expectation on the government to deal with this issue decisively. And um, uh, thankfully, uh, the, the president has uh, made security a topmost priority of his administration. And uh, I have no doubt about the fact that definitely this uh, will be delivered uh, sooner than later. But what is expected more, and uh, thankfully, uh, we have been uh, seeing signs that uh, they have already uh, hit the ground running and uh, by way of appointment and putting the right people at the right place to make sure that that aspect that is missing in dealing with security challenges in this country, the whole society approach is given topmost priority. But above that also, we have to consolidate on some of the gains made so far. Take for instance, uh, the security forces are doing all they could to, uh, you know, targeting, you know, these criminal elements. And we have to continue in that regard and then think out of the box, not necessarily in that way, but, uh, you know, thinking of uh, how do we improve in the, you know, in dealing with security challenges using the whole society approach and, uh, you know, involving other components of Nigerian society that were not involved in dealing with the security challenges. Take, for instance, most of the issues were kinetic and we should imbibe uh, the spirit of, uh, you know, non-kinetic approach to see. Because right now, most of these bandits, uh, from information available, they are even tired. They want to drop their, you know, weapons. And, uh, you know, so, so to what extent are we taking advantage of that? Just like what happened in the Northeast, where the Boko Haram terrorists were dropping their weapons voluntarily in numbers. And it is equally important to also uh, address such issues. Take, for instance... Um, the, the repentant Boko Haram, that are, uh, there are thousands in number. What are we doing with it? Because the issue now it is, can Borno state government and the military continue to hold forth without assistance from the federal government? So unless we look at that and so many other issues, 
we will still have uh, a long way to go. But I am so optimistic that uh, these security challenges, by involving every component of Nigerian society, particularly the youth groups, the traditional institutions, and other professional groups, uh, you know, in the security, you know, uh, uh, solution uh, in this country, I think we will uh, we will definitely get there. But I think the most important thing is putting the right people at the right place and let them be proactive. You let them be consulting and involving other components of the Nigerian society, just like the National Security Strategy has made. And most importantly, also follow up, you know, monitoring, evaluation, feedback, and, uh, you know, be open to the people so that they can report. And most importantly, again, the, the, the security forces should be, you know, just like the doctrine will be uh, revisited to see to what extent are they well trained and are well equipped the numbers to meet up with the security challenges. And by the way, when you are talking about, about other security challenges, we are in the 21st about, century, given the uh, globalization, uh, there is one other uh, issue, uh, the cyber crime that is infringing yeah. on our security, affecting, you know, security, and even the economy and social well-being of Nigeria. So it, it, it is not just those physical, there are also this, this aspect that uh, we have to, you know, uh, strengthen our institutions and security forces to meet up with these security challenges as they evolve. About welfare, um, the issue of salaries and welfare concerns of frontline military and security personnel, uh, which of course is uh, what the new administration has promised to address in its campaign manifesto. I remember interviewing you two years ago on the Armed Forces Remembrance Day, and you specifically talked about the fact that service personnel at that time earned about 1,500 Naira daily fighting terrorists. What's the situation now? How well is their welfare funded and what must be done differently under this new administration? Yeah, exactly. Welfare is very important. You are quite right about the operational allowances, particularly for the military personnel, right from the topmost general down to the last private soldier, SETs. And it, the situation is exactly the same because it is not just the military that are deployed in counterinsurgency operations. There are other components of the policing system, the Nigerian police and other security agencies. To what extent their welfare is being addressed is another issue. So it is not just enough to have the equipment, but you have to take care of the person behind the machine. And that is why the welfare of the security forces is equally important. And it is not even enough just serving, but what is the take-home package in case of, you know, people have, uh, you know, paid the supreme price, how do you uh, kind of uh, take care of the family they left behind? And for those who are wounded in action, what are those, you know, medical uh, remedies available to them, and so on and so on. So, so these, these are the issues. So beyond the equipment, the welfare also need to be enhanced. But it cannot be enhanced unless... If we look at the issue of dealing with uh, training, equipping, and because if the, 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 the security personnel are well trained, are well equipped, the issue of uh, security, and in any case, the training as it is, is also part of the welfare of security forces. So the, all these things go hand in glove. You have to be improving on them simultaneously. So uh, we have a very short time, Brigadier General, and I just want to squeeze in two more questions for you. Secessionist violence is one, you know, major security challenge the Tinubu administration will have to deal with. The Monday seat at home in the southeast is now crippling the economy of those states. Some say we may have explored or, you know, the, the, the kinetic approach, like you mentioned earlier, to solve these problems. And, and that right now we have to seek political solutions. Do you agree? Yeah, quite right. I think this is very important because most of the security challenges at the end of the day, uh, you end up on the negotiating table. In the case of sit at home, I think everybody is quite aware of the devastating consequences on the well-being of the people of Nigeria, not just necessarily the southeasterners, but also the economy. Because these people are very resilient and they are economically, you know, vibrant. But for you to have a whole day, you know, that there won't be any activity, I mean, socio-economic activities and other things, it really impringe on the national, I mean, on the development and the well-being of these people. Therefore, beyond the kinetic aspect, I think there is need for constructive engagement. And I made reference to the fact that there is need to make, uh, you know, to, 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 
to consult with other components of the Nigerian society, there is kind of communication gap between the components, especially in the Southeast. Take, for instance, what is the relationship between the old and the young? What is the relationship, what happened to the time-tested, you know, traditional methods of conflict resolution? Because you have the agri system, you have the town union, and above all, again, if you look at it from uh, another perspective, we have three tiers of government, the federal, state, and local government. In most instances, including the southeast and other parts of the Nigerian society, I mean, uh, other parts of Nigeria, some, uh, most of the local government system is almost collapsed. And unless we revive it and improve on good governance, so these issues will still be haunting us. But in the case of the southeast, I think there is need for dialogue, for people to see reason, because those people involved, most of the people that are staying or respecting the, the order of staying at home, in most instances, is because of the fear of unknown. So if you improve on the ability of the security forces to secure the lives and properties of the people, people, the well-meaning people, will definitely defy that. But at the same time, while doing that, you have to involve the components of the society, the traditional rulers, the youth groups, and other people in the South is to see to what extent they can talk among themselves. You look at it when it started. You know, it was a non-government and non-government. But we are just being econo economical with the truth. Because each and every one of these perpetrators is well known. They come from a particular state. They come from a particular local government. They come from a particular community and even, you know, household. So have we really identified all those issues? And to what extent are we talking about those issues. But most importantly is to improve on other institutions, the judicial system, so that they will be allowed to their responsibilities. The issue of impunity should not be there. If you commit any offense, let us take advantage of the judicial system to make sure that everybody is equal before the law. You know, the rule of law should be applied, and people will definitely uh, understand that there is no point, because at the end of the day, it is the people that are suffering. How, to what extent would it help the cause of agitation by asking people to stay at home. It doesn't make any sense. At the end of the day, you are General. taking them back. Uh, before that, um, we're going to return uh, uh, and talk to you subsequently. But if you can answer this within one minute, there's a house cleaning going on now with the new administration. Some heads of government agencies have been asked to step aside. In a minute, Brigadier General, what's your expectation with the service chiefs? A lot of expectation, and naturally you just have to uh, clean certain things that you are not too comfortable with, and uh, it is with the best of intention to make sure that the system is rectified and made better. So uh, it is no surprise in such things, and a lot of things are ongoing, there, especially in the sense that there is kind of lack of communication. And But I think uh, with this openness and proactiveness, people will be carried along. So uh, things that have been covered before will be uncovered, and the right thing will be done. Absolutely. We're counting on that, that the right things will be done, particularly um, under this new administration and how it will, you know, affect, how it will affect um, uh, security of lives and property. Thank you so much for your contribution from our spokesperson of the Nigerian Army, from our director, Army Public Relations, Brigadier General Sunny Usman, retired. Thank you so much.